Does your computer struggle to get through the rendering process? <laughs> yeah, I feel your pain. In this video, I'm going to cover what I believe is the most important feature to hit DaVinci Resolve for those of us who don't have a computer that's running in beast mode. So let's get into that. Before we do, my name's Ray and I make videos to help the creative entrepreneur. So if that describes you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we're talking about render in place in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. Also, check out the video production checklist that I have a link to down in the description. This is a checklist that I go through every single time that I make a new video. So let's start with the big question. What is render in place? Render in place is a new feature that they introduced into DaVinci Resolve 17. And what it does is it bakes all of the effects into a clip that it stores on your hard drive and then relinks to your timeline. So that way your computer doesn't have to spend extra time trying to process, especially if you're adding like multiple effects and things like that. So this thing is a huge time saver. This is a feature that I've been using and abusing for the last several weeks that I've been using DaVinci Resolve. I think you already know why you would want to use it. So let's explore it a little bit. Let's go. It wasn't as smooth as I had wanted. So this is a segment of a video that I released yesterday for the Foodie 2. I wanted to separate it to give you guys an example on this. So I created a separate bin right here called Cache, where I'm storing all of the rendered in place, rendered video files. That way I can keep things a little bit more organized. First thing we're gonna do though is select all of these clips right here to render. Immediately when you do that, it's going to select the default bin where those clips are actually stored. In this, it's a part of this file right here. The cached clips will appear in whatever bin that you have pre-selected. However, it is important to note that when you select a clip, it is gonna select the bin where that clip is actually stored. So keep that in mind. You wanna select the clip, then select the bin where you want it to go and then you wanna do the render in place process. I'm gonna click on the cache bin to make sure that these files are stored in that when I render them into place. Right click and click render in place. So you have several different options with this pop-up that's on here. First one, it says QuickTime. I actually end up keeping QuickTime as the default. However, you can select whatever ones that are in here. It's perfectly fine. As far as the codec, I actually end up switching this to DNxHR, which is the same codec that's used for caching. And if you've watched my previous videos, then you know that I'm using the rendered cache to be able to render my videos out because it just, it speeds it up and it prevents my system from overworking itself, which ultimately is not a bad thing. The default that it selects when you do this is actually 12-bit, which is totally overkill. I'm using a Canon EOS M50 and this thing is 8-bit. I actually select the 10-bit option. I'm not gonna notice any degradation, so that's important. I wanna keep the highest quality as I possibly can. With that said, I do make sure that I keep the include video effects enabled and I'm not actually rendering in place a video file until I've actually had the entire edit figured out. So I don't need to worry about the extra handles on there. We're gonna click render. So on the hard drive, I created a separate folder to store all of the cache files in. That way I can easily locate them when I'm done with the video project and then just get rid of them. If I need to get back into the project, then I'll just re-render them. But these files do take up a pretty significant amount of space. So it's just for the process of completing this project that I keep them around and then I just, I get rid of them. For this, I created a subdirectory called cache where I'm storing these cached files and hit select folder. And now it just renders out. Okay, so what we see here is actually a pretty common bug that I've been running into, which is kind of frustrating. As you can see, a lot of my clip has completely vanished. I'm using DaVinci Resolve Beta 3, so this is something that I have a feeling they're gonna fix in the future because obviously this this is not good. The workaround to this is to actually just undo it and then do these clips individually. So if you're trying to stay organized, you can select your cache bin after each one or you can just keep it where it puts it and then move the clips afterwards. It's not really a big deal. 
what we're gonna do is just render in place right here. And because we've already set everything up, the folder is already selected, the settings are already defaulted. We just hit select folder, it'll render in place. And then you just have to repeat it for however many other clips that you're going to render in place. As you can see here, it's rendered the effects. The cache bar is gone because there's no effects being cached on here. It's already baked into the file. So this is awesome. This thing's gonna play a lot quicker than the rest of this. We're gonna go ahead and take care of this for the rest of these. All right, cool. So you can see where all the rendered files are right here. So we can organize them a little bit better. What we'll do is select each one of these and then drag them over to the cache folder. At this point, if you want to apply any additional effects, you can go ahead and do that. And it's not gonna bog your system down as much as if say you had this color graded and then you added on an effect on top of it, like fusion, which obviously takes its own amount of time to be able to render. Sometimes the computer's doing so much processing that it just, it ends up bogging it down so much. And then that's where you start to get those GPU errors and that's not really a good thing. So if this is already baked in, you don't even have to worry about it. Another thing that I wanted to touch on on here is what if you need to go back and make an edit to the video file that you rendered out? Well, so if you look right here where the red line is, that means that there's no video data beyond that point. And the same thing is gonna be on the other side as well because we didn't include any handles in it. What we can actually do is decompose this in place. So you're gonna right click and you're gonna go back up to the same spot and hit decompose to original. When you do that, you can make modifications to this file as you see fit. You can see the handles are back so we can actually adjust the video file as we need to. Same thing on the other side as well, you have the green. If it's red, that's not a good thing. What I've noticed actually up until this point is the first time this has happened, but my color grade typically ends up going away. What I do to fix that is I'll go into the color tab. So if this is a part of a group, what I'm gonna do is add it back to the group or I'm going to make sure that I'm using remote grades if I'm using remote grades as I am in this particular scenario. And then all you have to do is select that and you're good to go. Like I said, this is the first time that this has happened where my grade has actually stayed where it's supposed to stay. So cool, it's a little buggy. So let's say at this point, you've made whatever adjustments that you need to make. All you're gonna do is make sure that you select your cache bin again, right click and then click render in place. It is going to render a new copy of the file. Your old copy is still gonna remain there. We'll worry about organization in the end when we delete all the unneeded files. But in the meantime, this is what we have. And then boom, there you go. It's back to where it was. So a few observations that I've noticed with this particular feature. Number one, unfortunately, right now you can only render clips. So you can't do fusion, you can't do titles, you can't do adjustment layers. Although there isn't any reason why you shouldn't be able to do compound clips. So, you know, that could work. Also, if you're using caching, rendered cache is going to speed up render in place significantly. So it is something to keep in mind. The reason is because render in place is actually rendering the video file. So if it's already cached, then it doesn't need to do all that extra workload. I've also noticed this has significantly reduced the amount of GPU errors that I've been getting just because this computer hasn't had to work as hard to do all of this extra processing. And then one final note, this has significantly sped up the entire rendering process. So already, most of the work is already done. So is this something that you're already using or is it something that you're gonna use? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to smash that like button if you got value out of this. Don't forget to hit subscribe and until next time, I'll catch you later.